before we start the haircut, I want to walk you guys through a consultation because a lot of times, most of the time actually, the terminology between the client and us is totally different, right? So as long as the client knows what you're talking about and you kind of know, you, you're able to kind of get through the haircut a lot easier. And at the end of the haircut, you can kind of tell them and reiterate like, hey, this is what we did. This is why we did it. But what I like to do is face my client in the mirror and we really just have a conversation about what they're going to do. So in this case, if your client is requesting a, a low fade, typically I'll place the fade where the ear is at. And a mid fade will be between the temple area and the ear. And a high fade will be right in the temple area. But if your client wants like a high and tight, then just gesture a little bit higher and take the length up or take the fade up a little bit more. But it's really preference, so just kind of gesture a little bit. But another thing is wherever I'm placing the fade, what I like to do is drop the back down just a little bit because you're going to complement the head shape and the style as well. Um, another thing, when it comes to um, fades and tapers, a lot of the terminology can be different. Some people hear about something else in another state, so they ask you and you're like, walk me through it. So a lot of times you can kind of just walk yourself through it together. But what I also do is I gesture about an inch apart when it comes to where I'm gonna be placing the fade because what I'm able to do is if I'm gonna take this haircut down to a zero, this is as high as I'm gonna take this zero where my index finger is at. And I have an entire inch to do the blending because if I put the fade right there, I'm just gonna to have to take the fade that much higher, right? Um, so you just kinda of wanna be on the same page. And I feel like when you guys talk through the consultation, your client is gonna know he's gonna get a good haircut before you even start because now he feels a little bit comfortable, a little bit safe with you, right? So I wanna get started in the back and we're gonna start in the back of the nape. The type of haircut we're gonna do is, I am gonna to touch this length. He wants to grow his hair out, but I really wanna show you guys how I would form this style or just in general, approach a haircut when it comes to the sheer cut. But I'm gonna trim the top, but the bottom part, we're gonna take it down to the skin. I wanna be able to blend it down to a low, a low fade um, in the nape area and the sideburn. So I'm gonna start there. So I like to use the wall senior as my clipper of choice and I use a wall peanut as my trimmer of choice, but it's really preference um, when it comes to what you guys wanna use. Oh man, your hair is pretty long. So, I'm gonna use my uh, clipper, but what I'm gonna do is turn the lever down. If you have a clipper that has levers on it, there's a, an adjustment here. So basically, if you turn it up, which means where the two blades separate, it creates a half size larger than what you're about to work on. Basically, I'm gonna use a zero, so I'm gonna turn the lever down, off or closed, and I'm gonna start in the nape area, and I'm gonna cut about an inch high from where the hairline actually starts. So right in here, I'm gonna start just below there, and I'm gonna cut about an inch high. So after you take care of the back, I'm gonna work towards the side. I'm gonna use my thumb to stretch the skin and I'm gonna take off his sideburn right below the temple area. Together, yeah. Okay. So her question was if it's closed, the clipper, it's when the blades are together. So right here, I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna stretch the skin with my thumb and I'm gonna cut a zero and take his sideburns off. Now, when you're taking care of the arch around the ear, whether you're gonna define it or you're taking it down to a zero, your client knows you gotta get in there, right? So just pull the ear down, ask him you know, if there's any discomfort, let me know. But he's gonna let you know if it hurts or not. But the client knows you gotta get in there, so feel free to pull that ear down. So here's the thing about a fade down to the zero. Does, it, does anybody feel like that's kind of where they feel challenged a bit? So I feel like with us, you know, we're visual learners and we just sometimes just want to attack it, right? So we're aggressive with our cutting. But I feel like if we take it down to a zero, we don't immediately have to start blending the fade completely. Imagine if he had a lot of bulk. 
where he had a lot of length that we had to take care of. What I would do is I would take the haircut down to a zero first. So I'll start in the nape. But what I'm going to do is grab a number one. I'm going to bypass the blending and I'm going to cut about an inch high from where I left off. But the reason why I do that is because now I want to feel like I have a little bit more control because what I'm doing is exposing the weight line that we have to take care of, right? But I'm going to take care of that at the very end because one, it's the most frustrating, but then I want to show you guys how a little bit more calm it can be as you approach that. But at the same time, isn't it easier to blend down to a one than it is to blend down to the zero? So we can kind of just bypass the fade and then work our way around the crown and take everything down to number one because then we can feel a little bit more comfortable. Because nine times out of 10, we're facing the mirror, the client, right, is facing the mirror, so you've seen everything that you're doing. So you know, you want to be able to feel a little bit more confident. Because at this moment, I'm sure your clients have said, are you going to blend that out? Uh, yeah, can I finish the haircut? <laughs> So my recommendation is anytime you make an adjustment on your clipper, whether you put an attachment or you turn the lever up, you always want to start in the back of the nape and then work your way from side to side because you have a lot more room to work with. You can feel the texture of the hair, the density, how your haircut or the hair is going to react to whatever it is that you're doing. So you, you just kind of want to make sure you're comfortable before you move on to the side because the side is not really forgiving at all. If you take too much off, you have to elbow your coworker and tell him, hey, that looks good, huh? <laughs> You guys all laugh at these two things that I'm saying because you guys all do it, huh? It's so funny. The struggle in the shop, huh? The struggle. But, you know, especially when you have a new client, you know, it's better to start in the back and really get comfortable with it because if you make an error, you can bounce back a lot faster and he can't even see what you're doing back there. So I still have my number one attachment on my clipper and the lever's turned down so it's off or closed and I'm working around the entire crown. I want to be consistent. When I'm taking the haircut down to a one, you know, sometimes you may miss a, a hair or two so it's good to just kind of go over it real quickly just so you can make sure everything's been taken care of, right? So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn my lever up so it creates a half size larger and I'm still going to be using my number one attachment. So it creates a one and a half and he typically keeps his length right there. So I'm just going to take it up to where the disconnection already is. But when you're blending, you're still working into the blend. So where we left off with the number one, I'm going to start just below there where the weight line is at and work my way into there because I'm able to build some momentum and bring that fade into the one and a half. So imagine if we were going to now work into like a higher number or he was going to keep more length right there, we would then blend into that. But at this point, he likes to keep a more of a fresh look. So we're going to give him a, a nice European finish, very polished, I would say. But um, we're going to clean up the sides just to a half. I keep my hand on top of the crown because I'm sure you guys can understand or feel me on this. When your client moves and you're kind of just like blending like that, you know, you can't really feel the sense of his movement, you know, and sometimes he moves too crazy or he looks at you. So if I keep my hand on the head, I can feel him if he's going to like reach in to get his phone or I don't know, check a text or something. So especially with kids, you just, my shop, they make fun of me saying that I have like a Kung Fu grip, but you can really feel your client move before he does. And then you can back off a little bit or just kind of really have a little bit more control. Uh, sure. So the thing is, we can't really discuss prices. But I can talk about this. Do you guys know what the average haircut is in the U.S. for men's grooming? So if you have a scale from the West Coast to the East Coast, um, if you actually did some research because I was like, I get this question asked a lot. Um, if you didn't include like a shampoo in your service, the average haircut is about $16.
So, of course, like beard trimming, shear cutting, um, shampooing, you know, there's a little bit different of a rate, but yeah, that's kind of the, the average price point. My price point is very close to that um, when it comes to, I, I feel like I'm pretty close to the average. Like I said, me and my, sh me and, uh, my shop and Johnny B, I feel like we're very parallel. I try to keep it affordable luxury, but um, you know, just depends on what area you're at, right? All the way open, yeah. So this, uh, I can use the same attachment and it creates a half size larger. So it's a one and a half. So now here's the thing. As I work my way up, what I'm basically doing is taking the bulk out from the nape. As I work my way up, I take the bulk out and then I'm gonna blend everything together. Because I feel like if we have a client with a lot of hair, I can take that out, really see what I'm doing and then just kind of detail the work a little bit. But practice makes permanent. As you work your way up, it'll start to blend itself out anyways. So we left off with the number one, the lever churned up or on or open. So I'm gonna turn it back down and I'm gonna work in reverse. And this is where I'm just gonna detail the haircut. So in this case, we're gonna get rid of any weight lines, shadows, hair that we might have missed, but we're really gonna start going in on the fade. And practice makes permanent, so sometimes you don't even have to go over your work, it's already starting to blend already. But I'm working my way back down, so where we left off right here, I'm gonna blend just below that. So that one and a half is being taken down to a number one. Yeah. Oh, you're saying like, how do you? Okay. This is very uh, edgy, but in your case, you're saying that the back would blend down into a fade. The sides may be disconnected and then it blends. I would keep a lot of length because you're right. The shorter you take it, the more it looks like it's bald, right? So when you keep a lot of length and fullness, it, you can like sculpt it so it like layers right into your fade, especially if he's gonna have a lot of length up top. But that's the thing, with clients with very fine hair or very, uh, I'm gonna put it back down to a one. With fine hair or uh, very light colored hair, you can wash off sideburns like crazy. So if your client's requesting a number one and he has fine hair or he has lighter hair like blondes, then you should probably put a number two right there or use a one and a half. And then when he sees it, he can then take it down a little bit shorter. Because a lot of times they want something but they don't really know what they're asking for. And if we take the one to the sideburns and we take it off and we turn them around and he sees that his sideburns are gone, he's gonna be like, what the heck, I wanted sideburns. You're like, well, you wanted a number one too, what the heck? Yeah, I still have a number one right now. I have one of our barber brushes. Throughout the haircut, what I do with one of them, I, I like to clean my tools just because there's a lot of hair buildup. I want to make sure that it's cleaned off. And then I grab another one just so I can make sure I clear off all the hair that's just sticking to the scalp so I can see what I'm doing. You like, have you ever used the uh, air hose? No, air but I've seen that before. Yeah, that's right out of my shop. I love it. So now let's take it down to where we initially started off with, right? So where that weight line is at, what I'm going to do is use my clipper with no attachments and I'm going to just really tackle it. So that's a zero, right? And we left off with a one. So the only thing that separates the two is what? A half size. So this is a zero. When I turn my lever up, it turns it into a half size larger. So that's where we can really start to take it down. But as I approach that weight line, I want you guys to keep in mind, especially when you have clients with very fine hair, when you start blending that out, the half is being blended into the number one. So a lot of times there will be a little bit of a weight line left there. 
try not to use your half and take it a little bit higher to blend that out because you're just gonna take the fade that much higher. So as I'm blending, if I create a little bit of a weight line above there that I didn't want, just grab your number one, slap it on, and then wash that weight line out. A lot of times that's all you need to do. If you're taking the haircut pretty short, it's always better to use the higher of the two numbers instead of going down to, oh, I can blend this out real quick. I, I just need a little detail because I've done it before and we just spend a little bit more time doing the haircut. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna use a half. I'm gonna start just below that weight line and I'm gonna blend up about a half an inch. I'm gonna use a half and then I'm gonna start working my way back down to a zero. So this is a half, I'm gonna feather up. Again, I'm only gonna stay in the back of the nape area, right? And I'm gonna use my thumb to stretch the skin so I can create a flatter surface. So that way there isn't a lot of tension. But if you can tell, there's still a little bit of a weight line there because it's a zero and a half. We have to take it a little bit tighter so we can start blending into the zero. Yes. So she's talking about this guard. This bad boy whew, is a detailer. Um, for this haircut, I want to avoid using it, but um, this would kind of just get in the grooves in between. Basically, this guard that she's mentioning is me turning the lever up, but you have more of a softer control because of the plastic, I feel. So I'm gonna continue working around the crown. And because we're blending everything down to a zero, I wanna to work towards the sides as well. So now that we've done a half, it looks kind of blended, but we're gonna take it a little bit further because we started with a zero, so we're gonna finish with a zero, right? So with the half, what I'm gonna do is turn this lever halfway down, so not all the way quite to a zero, and I'm gonna continue working on that weight line. But now, because we're taking it a little bit tighter, I'm gonna ask my client or our model to look down just a bit, just so that way he can automatically stretch the skin for me so I can groove in there a bit easier. So where the weight line is at, if I can point that out, I'm gonna start just below there, and I'm gonna continue feathering up right into the half where we left off. So I really wanna start marrying the half and the zero together. But we're gonna do it slow, but we're gonna have a lot more control now because you know, we have a sense of direction because a lot of times we just like to go in and we just create all these weight lines. Are you staying tight on the line? I'm gonna start just below, but yes, I'm gonna start just below the, the weight line and feather right in. And I'm probably only cutting about a half an inch from where that weight line starts. And when you're doing a lot of blending down to the skin, try to avoid pulling out. Just kind of feather up or scoop because once you start pulling out, you create an automatic weight line and you just kind of go over it a little bit more. So now we're going to take this clipper down to a zero. So I'm going to turn the lever all the way down. And I want to again start in the back, right? Because why? We have much more room to work with, right? So I'm going to start in the back of the nape, but now I'm going to really target that weight line. So I'm going to have you look down just a bit. I'm going to start just below that weight line and feather up right into it. When I was in school, I actually was taught to uh, start at the top of the haircut and work my way down. But for me, I felt like I was going over a lot of sectioning too much. And um, I, I just feel like this method works well for me. And I know we have our own preferences, but this is just one technique I want to show you guys when we approach the haircut down to the skin. You know, you could always keep that in your arsenal of tools just in case, you know, maybe you just have a new client that you're struggling with. Now I'm going to turn the lever back up to a half. 
and I'm just going to feather just, uh, just right above where the weight line was because now I just want to make sure it's a little bit more um, polished off. We have a, an essentials box that we have downstairs. It looks like the one on the table right there, but we have a talc powder in there. And if you guys are, are ten, does everybody know what a talc powder does? So this is meant to really absorb moisture, but we have a little bit of a slip to it. So for us behind the chair, we can use it to get rid of hair splinters. If you get a lot of those, those are if you're doing a lot of men's hair cutting. But what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna wipe his nape down if you maybe sometimes as you're fading down to the skin and you keep kind of, there's too much pressure and maybe it bunches up and it's just because there's a lot of friction going on. So if you were to soften up the skin or absorb a lot of the moisture, what happens is you create a lot more of a smoother glide. 